Um, also, from a federal standpoint, um, our office, the Office for Civil Rights, um, if we do get complaints and we have some fact sheets, information, we have some CDs that are out in the front that explain in a video format, it's in Korean as well, um, what your rights are under Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I also have some fact sheets that have been translated into Korean that, again, it's a one-page fact sheet that explains your rights in a very basic way under Title VI. When we get this type of complaint, it actually is one of the easier ways to determine that discrimination has occurred if you're not getting language services in your language because the law is very clear in Title VI, especially with respect to interpretation. Even if the agency, um, even if it's not a large enough community, um, that's not the case here, but even if it's not a large enough community, let's say um, the language is um, Khmer or Cambodian, um, that community may not be large enough to trigger written translations for certain communities or certain social service agencies. However, they're still, um, the agencies are still required to provide oral interpretation to the, to the uh, applicant or the beneficiary of the program. For Korean, um, in fact, we have received complaints against LA County DPSS, and we actually do have, um, there's an agreement with our office and the county, also with the state um, uh, agencies, uh, that they are required to provide uh, written translations, in, and Korean is one of those languages because it does meet the threshold um, under federal law. So um, I know that that is something that they're um, currently working on. I know that it has something to do with uh, a system issue, but, um, it, you know, I just wanted to say that if you you can file a complaint with our office, it is something we look at, and we usually uh, try to ensure uh, that these different agencies um, in the states of California and our region are make, are ensuring that they um, are meeting their obligation under Title VI. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to, to add that uh, from from a uh, patient perspective, uh, bad service, if you have not been provided an interpreter, it is not bad service, it's a violation of the law. And so what we need to do, I think somebody was asking, why aren't these services being provided? It's because a lot uh, of, of the officials don't know that it's a problem. As you heard, you know, they're just finding out now, right, that it's a problem. So what we need to do, the community needs to do, is to actually keep complaining and keep documenting that it's a problem and then it'll be addressed because unless we come forward and speak out and say it's a problem it'll always be oh one one person has a problem it's a, it's a uh, isolated incident it's just bad customer service but we know that it is not bad customer service we know this happens a lot but they have to hear from us that it is happening a lot. So it is very important that you do go and complain and file whatever you need to file to make sure that it can't just be dismissed and they can't just say, oh, it's a bad, you know, service problem. For instance, if you, if you have a notice that's supposed to be, uh, translated, why can't you go and call your worker and say, this notice is supposed to be in another language when why can't that worker then get you an interpreter so you can understand it. That's what they should be doing, and that's what you should be demanding. Oh, actually, I would like to end, uh, respond to your comment that whenever KRC staff try to help seniors by calling social workers or DPSS worker or SSA worker, it takes more than an hour. Sometimes they say, Hold, hold, please hold, and then they wait, wait, wait. Sometimes this gets disconnected, and then we call again, and then call back in 30 minutes, and then we get automated message, and then after that, we get the message saying that these workers' working hours are Tuesday between 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Those are only hours that that specific worker that we contacted claims in her voicemail that those are only hours that she receives phone calls. That, that's where we need specifics. We need to know who was called, what office, if, it, if you're talking about a DPSS office, and who you were trying to get in touch with. You know, 
Only if we know specifics can we really take the most appropriate action. Um, yes, that is correct. But at the same time, I see frustration from community members' part that they have to complain over and over again. That's why we are having this town hall to have great panelists to listen to communities and come together to uh, resolve this problem. So we understand that we have to bring specific cases to people who can uh, change this, but at the same time, we would really appreciate if you move forward a little bit quicker to uh, help community members to get the service that they deserve. But again, this cannot happen without collaboration among community-based organizations, community members, and um, all these governmental agencies who are trying really hard. So um, 